Okupa's conviction will not demoralize me, says Peter Obi, as court finds DG Obi Dati Presidential Campaign Council 13 million naira for money laundering charges. And the Air Force battles Zamfara terrorists, 50 bandits, soldiers killed, days after 28 persons were killed in southern Kaduna. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Welcome back. The Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi has said that the conviction of the campaign organization's director general, Dr. Doyin Okupe, over alleged money laundering would not break his resolve to be Nigeria's president. Obi said this during the interaction with journalists in Uyo at the Nigeria Union of Journalists Akwai Bomb State Council Secretariat on Monday. The Labour Party presidential candidate said he was undaunted by the conviction and will continue with his campaign and allow the due process of law to take its course. Okupe was found guilty of receiving over 200 million naira cash from a former national security advisor, Colonel Sambo Dasuki, retired. He was therefore sentenced to two years by Justice Ojuku with an option of 500,000 naira fine on each of the 26 counts for which he was found guilty. Joining us to discuss this is Mr. Abiodun Shoumi, a political analyst. It's good to have you join us today, Mr. Abiodun. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, 67 days to the election and the drama gets more and more interesting, don't you think? Yes, it is. Um, getting more interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the whole situation and how things are evolving, um, we are beginning to see the all issue in total perspective, um, particularly in relation to the Labour Party, which is not well known like the other two leading political parties, that is the PDP and APC. So uh, many people are taught the Labour Party represents a new trend. Um, obviously, it is becoming the third force in Nigerian politics. Um, it has emerged in that way. And there's a lot of hopes and expectations, you know, expected by Nigerians. Uh, some Nigerians actually believed that uh, the Labour Party would create a new Nigeria. But when you look at all the events, the revelations coming up, coming out of Labour Party, um, it's increasingly becoming clear that the dream of having a new party, the void of all the biases and the problems associated with the two older leading parties, uh, seems to be a mirage. What do I mean by that in relation to Labour Party? The, the party started on a very good note, only to end up, you know, with its national youth leader again removed from a cell from the party for corruption. He left. Then you then have the Ogun State um, issues where the state chapter actually accused Doyin Okupe of um, criminal of the 20 million naira meant for campaign. That was the first chapter for many people because as far as we are concerned, um, the slogan, we don't pay shishi, has been sold to many people, including myself. But that was a shocker that also oh, so Labour Party is paying 20 million naira, you know, for rally, for people to attend rally. As if that was not bad enough, you now suddenly have the state chapter accusing, you know, the, the, the national leadership of pollution with um, uh, Doyo Kukwe, and that led to the, to the dissolution of the Ogun State Labour Party chapter. We are yet to get through that, then we have the National Public Secretary, Dr. Abayomi Arabambi, you know, coming up with new allegations 
that the party leadership actually forged a court of appeal judgment that allowed certain things to happen in nine And for me, that was um, too much. Within a short period of time, I think it was not enough. We now have Dunyo Fukwe, who is the chief operating officer of the campaign, tagged the DG of the campaign, you know, now being jailed or being convicted and sentenced to prison uh, with... Uh, a provision that he could um, spend the prison by paying 500000 in lieu, you know, on each count. And at that stage, I now begin to wonder that is the dream that I and many people have, is, it, is the dream still real? Hmm. Because when you look at the situation, I, while I blame Okupe, you know, for getting himself involved in money laundering, which in any case um, typifies Okupe, you then ask yourself, isn't it, does it mean that Peter Obi did not carry out due diligence before appointing Dunyo Okupe? Because all he simply needs to do is to, is to Google. There are a lot of stuff on Dunyo Okupe before his appointment. Does it mean that he knew that Okupe was undergoing trial and he, he, with ESC trial, and then appoint him as a friend to be the DG of his campaign. Whichever is the case, whether he forgot to do due diligence or whether he knowingly appointed Dunyo Kupe, this convention has thrown up a question on his sense of judgment. In my view, I think he exhibited a poor sense of judgment on this matter, on this very, very matter. And uh, that is a revelation, you know, to so many people. I, you cannot hold to be responsible for the infractions committed by doing Okupe. But at least the fact that he was appointed while undergoing trial, uh, it means to be risk the embarrassment which the party has found itself in. And Obi cannot escape a part of the blame for all. Okay, uh, but how would you uh, how would you react to? Okay, let me not use the, the word. How how do you see the reaction of the Labour Party presidential candidate uh, where he said that um, he is not uh, daunted by whatever is happening? He will allow the law to take its course, and then he will continue with his campaign the way he's doing it. So, how would you rate that? What are your comments on that? Well, uh, yeah, well, on his reaction uh, to the conviction, that's another shocker in the sense that I would have expected that Obida has styled himself as a new uh, breed of politician willing to help, you know, reshape our country to build a new Nigeria will immediately not behave like the other politicians. I had expected it will be to announce his replacement immediately, to remove him as the campaign DG, even this embarrassment. But what he's saying is that he will allow the, 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 the law to take his course. The law has taken his course. He has been convicted. He has paid fine in legal. That has not removed the conviction. It means today, Obi has a DG of his campaign who is an ex convict. That is the meaning of what has happened. So, what is more, what does Okupe need to do before he can be replaced? Of course, I'm not oblivious of the fact that Obi is still referring to a possible appeal by saying that. Just a moment, the, just a moment before the, you continue, before you continue, uh, just a I moment. I think that is totally unexpected, and I don't think, I think that is uh, condemnable. It does not show the signal or a pointer to the fact that Obi is the kind of a brand new politician some people thought he is. Um, Mr. Shomi, can you hear me? Um, 
Yes. Report just reaching us now is that uh, says that uh, Doyo Kukwe has actually resigned. We do not know whether he was made to resign or he resigned out of his own uh, volition, but he has resigned, which means he is no longer the um, Labour Party DG of the presidential campaign DG of Labour Party. So, will your reaction or will your will whatever you feel about this whole issue change with that uh, action? No. The, the reason is clear. Obi should have taken a stand immediately and forget about giving his friend a soft landing. He should have sent a positive signal out to the people that when I make it, uh, commit an error of judgment, I will correct it immediately. You do not leave Okupe to resign. That is what they call, what is called soft landing. Even Okupe soft landing on account of friendship. So I think it is wrong. He should have sacked Okupe himself. He appointed Okupe. And Okupe committed serious infraction to the extent of being convicted. Then he should have sacked Okupe. He shouldn't have left it to do Okupe to resign. Hmm. It's a sign of weakness, a leadership weakness. Okay. It should have appeared very strong, and that would have played very well with the public. If he had signed Okupe, rather than allowing him to resign, which is like uh, giving him a soft landing. Okay, well, well, that very conviction we're talking about of Dr. Doyin Okupe, he was convicted over alleged money laundering in a way that for me was very funny. The case was in the morning. They said the decision will be taken up, taken about 1.30, that is in, after midday. The deadline was given within the same day to pay up or get locked up. Payment was made in the evening and everybody was home and dry. I, I don't know, how would you rate that judgment, that whole, whole matter? It came up that day. Maybe the investigation has been going on, the case has been going on, but it came up that day. They had some rest till midday, after midday, after that, the conviction came, and they still gave time till 4.30 or thereabouts for him to pay up, or otherwise he goes to jail. And he was able to pay and just leave like that. What does that tell us about either the, the justice system or everything around this case, the political uh, uh, scenario that is playing out here? Yes, um, for anyone that knows the Nigerian, how the Nigerian court works, at the time when Okupe was uh, convicted, he said he had a prior knowledge that he will, he will be convicted and be given a soft landing. There is no way you can get convicted in the afternoon and then you can perfect the bail, you know, almost immediately with a view of not going to prison. Our system does not work like that. I agree that that is, it should work the way it has worked for Doyo Kukwe. But that is not how it is working currently. Except you already have an advance notice of what the judgment will be and what you need to do. Hmm. It's quite amazing that Doyo Kukwe could come up with 13 million naira with, within, with, within a few hours, a couple of hours, you know, to escape, you know, staying a day in prison. And it still tells you, it raises the question about those who move into Labour Party, when will be moved into Labour Party, are actually members of the same ruling class who have amassed so much wealth, you know, and then move into Labour Party simply to take over the leadership of the party. It does not give <coughs> any fresh breath of feeling that the Labour Party who represent a new trend in our country. It simply shows that the idea of going into the Labour Party is about power. It's not really about the transformation of our country. Hmm. Okay, well... There's nothing Labour would do that uh, PDP or, or, or ABC will not do. That's basically what it is. Now, there are some conspiracy, <laughs> conspiracy theories, uh, I would like to call them, uh, that have come up. 
some have said that, okay, maybe he was guilty, but why wait to this point at the heat of electioneering before you come up with uh, what a lot of people have seen as a hasty judgment, even though it may not be that, but the timing seems to a lot of people to be wrong. Do you think, apart from the fact that a crime may have been committed, there are also some political undertones, as well as some people are thinking? I have read about some of those comments, people trying to allude uh, to uh, a kind of um, political undertone. Mm. Um, we have had issues like, um, why is it now? Why are they trying him now? Why is it that he's being convicted now? Now, uh, to me, what is very clear is that the will of justice is very slow in Nigeria. That is totally unacceptable. But the fact of the matter is, a crime is a crime. You can get tried at any point in time, even in 20 years' time. The solution is don't commit the crime to avoid being tried at any point in time. Whether it has a political undertone or not, I'm not sure of that. Because what I know is that he has been under trial before he moved into the Labour Party. He was tried, he, he was arraigned in court when he was a PDP member. And that is the point. Obi should have taken account of the fact that he was undergoing trial and not appoint him, you know, as his campaign bitch. So, for me, we have also had the fact that um, he didn't pay his uh, membership dues of the Labour Party. We had that from the Ogun State chapter. It's one of the allegations made against him. That he was owing the party, he didn't pay the, the, the honor dues when he moved in. So when you look at that situation, nobody can safely, you know, allege that there is a political undertone to the conviction. I don't think so. I think the will of justice was slow and eventually catch up with it. Don't forget we had the fire chase uh, case in the KP. If you remember the poultry case, mm. it's yet to be concluded till now. That is not acceptable. That is why we need to reform our judicial system. The cases like this should not take more than a year uh, to, to liquidate. But unfortunately, it has dragged on for so long. But, but in, I don't think there's any political but, but, but in fairness, um, we have all often said that um, you are not guilty until proven otherwise. And at the time of Correct. trial, we couldn't really say that you could call someone a criminal just because he was undergoing trial. And especially in light of the fact that just recently, uh, after this, uh, the uh, Kujie prison break, we also know that there were very high profile uh, prisoners, as it were, inside that Kujie prison. One of them was a, a former governor and he has been freed. After even serving some time in prison, he has been freed and they say all allegations have been dropped. So what if this is the same case that will happen to Okupe after a while, even after paying the 13 million, which is also like serving a jail term, he is now freed. So will you still blame the person who thought maybe there is uh, some element of truth in what he's saying in his denying or otherwise of committing this crime? Okay, there are two elements to it. The first element is um, somebody on, um, the fact that you are facing trial does not mean you are guilty of any offense, and uh, the law assumes that you are still innocent. Okay, that could apply when uh, Okupe was appointed as a campaign VG. He was yet to be convicted. Mm. But the truth of the matter is, whoever is making that appointment should realize that should he get convicted, he will be guilty of poor judgment. Mm. Anyone, you know, having going through a criminal trial has no business, you know, occupying such a high profile office. You know, it's clear you need you can we have so many people who can do the job. Don't forget forget the case of Professor Ademi Bridge, the the then Minister for Health, who was accused over the five million naira Ghana trip issue. And she had to step aside as a serving minister. She was eventually found innocent by the court. That should be a standard practice where once you are facing criminal charges, you say, you know, aside and clear yourself first. The other issue is 
if eventually on appeal he is cleared, our father will wipe off the blemish on his uh, reputation currently. But until a court of appeal or a superior court overturns that, he stands convicted. He is an ex convict today. Okay. Well, ex convict, um, that means the IGP also. Uh, in my thinking, is an ex-convict as well. Maybe we are misinterpreting the laws because uh, he was supposed to go to jail, but he stayed outside, made whatever he moves he was supposed to make, and then they upturned that judgment and said he was no longer supposed to go to jail. I don't know how that works. But that's not what my, my problem right now, because our time is up, but I'd like to pick your brain on something that happened today or yesterday as well. Uh, we woke up to the news that the governor of the Central Bank of, of Nigeria uh, missed arrest just by a thin thread. DSS says that he's a terrorism financer, but, or financier rather, but according to reports, they could neither present concrete evidence nor pass through the right channels, including consulting the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria before seeking the arrest of the chief of about the most sensitive institution. What would be your take on this case? Very briefly now, because our time is up, please. Yes. Um, I read, um, in fact, there is a video and a press conference addressed on that. And for me, we need to look for more um, evidence to substantiate the allegations. It's not just enough for us to, uh, to actually uh, believe it or reject it. Except somebody is processed through the criminal justice system, where you clearly establish evidence, it then becomes almost impossible you know, to form judgment on the basis of allegations. Yeah. OK, uh, well. Uh, I'd like to thank you at this point, Mr. Shomi, uh, even though you still have more to, to say, but this is how we have to uh, drop it on this segment of the show. Thank you for being on the show. We'll go on a short break and return with something else. Mr. Shomi, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah. When we return, we will be looking at the recent attacks in southern Kaduna and Zamfara and the efforts made by the government to mitigate this. Just stay with us.